Hey everybody, lighting is typically one of the most important parts of any image, CG or real world. With it, you can define a mood and feel of a scene which can range anywhere from a cozy afternoon, warm type feel to something a bit more Scandinavian or even a more serene nighttime setup. Even more so, it can really up the perceived quality of your rendered images just by simply making things feel more polished and intentional, which makes things look more professional. On top of all of that, lighting can also make a big difference in any and all storytelling you're trying to do. Uh, just like in movies, uh, you want to be deliberate with your lighting so that it fits the story you're trying to tell. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of essential lighting techniques for lighting up your interior scenes. Typically, it all starts with your environmental lighting, so your sky and sun, essentially. And here, there's two main techniques you can use, HDR lighting and a procedural sun and sky system. HDRIs, or high dynamic range images, are super common and what they are are basically photo captured images that contain 32 bits of data and multiple exposures baked into a single photo. They are popular because not only do you get a nice background in your scene this way, but also because typically all the clouds and gradients in the sky are, well, pretty much just like they are in the real world. Plus, alongside that, you sometimes can get the ground level in as well. And ultimately, uh, you just get a rather complex, full of variety environmental light setup just by simply importing your HDRI of choice into your scene. Now, the way you set them up in V-Ray is you bring in a V-Ray dome light, you hop into the V-Ray node editor, enable light nodes, and then you bring in the HDRI as a V-Ray bitmap. Make sure it's set to linear here, and then just connect it to the dome color. And if you want to rotate the thing now, uh, just rotate the dome light in your viewport. Now, where can you find HDRIs? Well, there's plenty of websites online that allow you to get or buy one, uh, but you can also get them in Chaos Cosmos, uh, where you get these neat looking previews, and the import process is super straightforward. You just import it, and it's in your scene. The downsides of HDRIs, however, are mainly that you're dealing with fixed images, meaning you can't really customize things like the position of the sun on the sky or the sky itself. And that is where the procedural V-Ray sun and sky system comes in because it grants you a lot more of that customization control. With this thing, you get a separate control over your sun's position, as well as its color, intensity, and also the size of the sun, which can, for example, make for softer shadows, which simulates an overcasty sky. And then you get pretty much complete control over the sky as well, where you can change the intensity, the altitude you're at, and a bunch of other things. Now in V-Ray, all you need to do is you need to bring in the V-Ray sun and sky system. And just like that, if you now move the sun around the scene, the sun will, well, move. You can customize any of the sun settings, uh, which really gives you a lot of control to get to the look you want. Now in the V-Ray node editor, when in world mode, if you unlink the V-Ray sun from the sky, you can then also tweak just about everything in the way your sky works. And there is a lot you can tweak if you so want to or need to. Now, in case you're wondering, unlinking the sun from the sky means that the sky won't realistically adapt to the sun's position in the sky. So a sun that is about to sunset will look like that, but the sky won't. Okay, now a lot of the times you'll also want to have artificial lighting turned on in your scenes. And so that typically refers to interior lighting of any sorts. Ceiling lights, uh, desk lamps, standing lights, you name it. The way you light these can be done in a variety of different ways, but arguably two are the most common. You can place an emissive material on the emissive parts of the actual light bulb, which typically works fine, but might really increase the render times. So alternatively, what you can do is you can bring in a V-Ray material in here, okay, plug it into that material output slot, and then we're going to play with the self-illumination color. We're just going to give it the same color that our light material previously had, and then we're also going to make sure that the self-illumination in here is checked to off, okay? Now, what we can do, and we've already done that, is we're going to place sphere lights, area sphere lights, around our light sources here. Now, we're just going to enable them, 
And as you can see, that then performs quite a bit better. Now, on top of that, what you can also do is uh, you can create a bit of a blend material for the actual sort of lighting fixtures themselves. So we have this main V-Ray material, which is our base material here. And then we've pre-prepared a V-Ray light material here. We're going to plug into the coat material one slot. So this is just a regular light material. And this is going to kind of further help sell the effect that these lights are actually on. And everything's still going to be very, very performant. And we can control how much uh, of that, how that blending goes between the standard V-Ray material. Uh, so if we just go with full white, as you can see, we're just seeing this light material here. And then if we go with full black, and then we just see that, you know, that translucent, I guess, fabric -y material in this case. But if we, again, if we want to sell the effect like that these are on, we can just, you know, up the blend amount here a little bit. And, you know, that looks more like the lights are actually on. And so that's just a couple of different ways on how you can optimize a setup like this for performance. For when it comes to artificial lighting, most commonly you're just trying to make things look realistic and in tune with the rest of the lighting in your scene. So uh, pretty much the same principles you'd apply on a real world set. Now, sometimes, however, you'll want to bring in fake lights as well. The lights that light up parts of your scene in order to accentuate the existing lighting that isn't so strong. Or to add some additional lighting where there isn't enough, but you could use it to make the image more aesthetically pleasing. The principles are the same. You take an area light, you place it where you want it to be, and then you make it invisible. Whether you want it to be seen in the reflections or refractions is up to you and your use case, obviously. Now, operating so many lights and changing their intensities and colors can be rather time consuming, even on a fast machine. So instead of having to have to update the render every time you make a change to your lights intensity or color, uh, you can just use V-Ray's light mix functionality. Now to get light mix going, what you'll want to do is you're going to want to go under the view layer here and then toggle light mix to on, and then you can either start the interactive renderer or the production renderer. With this thing, you can fine tune the lighting in your scene without having to re-render the changes. It's all done on the image that's already being rendered or has finished rendering. So this way you can really fine tune the lighting without having to have to lose too much time waiting for the renderer to update. It is truly an incredibly awesome feature. And yes, it is physically accurate. We won't bore you with the math here, but suffice it to say, the math does its thing and the results are the same as if you'd be tweaking your light properties directly. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Any and all comments are welcome. And if you'd like to learn more about essential camera techniques in Blender, then we suggest you check out this video. Or if materials are your current jam, then the material essentials video. Thank you for tuning in.